Welcome back to Three Orcs Channel with David. Um, today we're going to continue with part three of the clerics of Urbavank. On um, part two, we focused on the city of Urbavank and all the churches there. And today we're going to go ahead and continue with the actual towns in the Vicounty County of Urbavank. So um, we're looking at the map uh, from Adam Myers. And uh, I'm always looking over here to the right, so uh, or your left, um, on my map on my other screen. And so we'll look around, and you see that the city of Urbabank is right there on the banks of the Veldiva River, Velverdiva River. And uh, we covered that already. And the goal of this video was to, um, to highlight the locations of where a cleric, player cleric could be from. Um, they could be any, from any of these towns or the city or maybe countries around Verbavank. And I feel that if you had a village with a keyed church there, like the village of Hamlet, the St. Cuthbert church there with Calmet um, being the canon, um, if, the cleric was, if the cleric was a cleric of St. Cuthbert, he could be from there. And that could be his, uh, his priest that trains him and taught him as a young boy when his family uh, gave him over to the church or maybe he was orphaned to the church. Whatever background you can come up with, something unique, something imaginative would be the better. The more imaginative, the better. I, that's how what I believe in my games. And, uh, and I always give my players some choices. I'll help them along, give them some uh, examples of maybe something they can think about or choose. So today we're gonna look at the villages and uh, we'll, we'll start from the top, from the north, and hit, make our way more south and east. Uh, so the first place I want to stop at will be uh, Edabuk. Edabuk. So what I'll do is... So this is my article on the village of Edabuk. Um, I have uh, flavor text as you travel into the village. So it conveys a sense of what the village is like and the people that live there. And, um, of course, we have the full details of the village itself, but we're going to focus on the, on the churches. So the first church, let's look at the map first. Um, this map I made in a wonder draft, and uh, I got the Knives Run running through it with a bridge going over it. Um, I can only zoom in one scale and then back again. So um, this up here to the top right-hand corner, I'll zoom in. Um, that's to Verbavank along the the run there, the, the stream, and uh, I can zoom around, I suppose. I can scroll down uh, past all the farms to the Browitz Bridge, which I named myself. Um, this road right here, by the way, again, is the long road because it's the longest uh, merchant road in the Vice County that extends from the city of Verba Bank all the way down to Ostwerk. So we cross the river um, because there's no churches or chapels on that side. Unless you want to put a um, an old God's church, like a Druid's Grove in the woods over there in the far right. Here, I'll zoom out for you. See, there's some woods down here in the bottom right. That you could probably put a Druid's Grove in there if you want to. I might still do that in the future. So let me zoom back into the Market Square. Um, so the first church is on the left, number three. And uh, let's look at the key here. So number three is Cathedral of the Damned Men. Um, this is a universal church. It's a town's cathedral. Um, villagers pray to several lawful good gods here um, that House Langmire is a supporter of. So there's a little bit of uh, disconnect there between the people and uh, House Langmire. Uh, so Tor Torbera Berger is the priest of Rayo that presides here. Uh, but mostly the, the priests here are consist of, of priests of St. Cuthbert. Um, it's known for its famous sculpture and it's guarded by nothing. The temple welcomes all. The temple is also a classroom. Um, it's a modest building and got pictures here. So let's go ahead and look at the person that runs this place. Uh, Torbera is a cleric of Rayo. Um, his background is a sage. Uh, he runs this cathedral of worship for the township and allows other lawful good priests to present sermons here to their followers. He probably has a schedule. Um, He's got a necklace of animal teeth in her pockets. Like it's a girt lady. Uh, she's got gold. Uh, she's nobility wealth class. She's early middle aged human. Short, overweight, brown eyes, long, well. Okay, I messed that up. I apologize. I should have been a man <laughs> because he's got a beard. I really didn't think of that through. I didn't um, edit that and fix it. 34 years old. Okay, so we have a person. We have a, 
a priest of Rayo here that can interact with the players. So let's go back to the village itself. Um, and of course, there's priest of St. Cuthbert. You know, not all priests have to be a resident of a temple or a chapel. They could be normal, regular people with jobs. They could be a merchant, a, a fisherman. And, and they also happen to be a priest. So on God's day, um, they'll perform their sermons. And they also teach their disciples, um, their apprentice, to become a priest as well, or a cleric. So that's always possible, an idea for somebody's background. And uh, what makes this location great is um, quite a few different faiths of lawful alignment can use this facility for their prayers. Okay, so now let's go to a, a cathedral here. Um, the next one on the map is number four across the bridge to across the market square, this large complex. Um, by the way, uh, to, uh, farther to the west is uh, Lord L Langemeyer's uh, estate a manor, and there's taverns and shops and stuff. Okay, let's go and look at number four here. Uh, where'd it go? Oh. Yeah, I haven't keyed it yet. So what I was going to do, which I haven't done yet, is key it for um, an actual a cathedral for Rayo. So Rayo is the official uh, religion from House Langmire because uh, they preach um, serenity and reason and peace. Uh, but they also make great uh, advisors to nobility. And mostly only nobility these days, since the Battle of Edinburgh de Meadows, um, worship Rayo. Uh, so on the surface, politically, uh, uh, publicly, that's who they worship. Of course, they could really worship also someone else as well, but um, you don't see that here in the village, no evidence of that. You know, if they were to have their own chapel uh, for a different god for different reasons in the campaign, it'd probably be in their manor. Uh, so those are the two places I had keyed for this village. Um, oh, I have the chapel of the home. That's number 20. Let's look at the map first. Uh, number 20 would be located right there in the middle of the shops. Um, I put a little signpost over the shops. Well, let's see what it is. Let's go ahead and see what it says. This chapel is dedicated to Marika, the Oridin demigoddess of ag agriculture, farming, and the home. Uh, so what's is great about this place is many of the locals here are Oridin descendants. That's the uh, makeup of this town. And they, they venerate Marika for their farmlands. They meet here for guidance in all matters of agriculture. I would look at this place as an agricultural center of information, almost like a guild, except it's a, it's a, it's a religion. So it has more weight, I suppose. And I got some artwork for it, you know, what it looks like, sort of, um, inside at least. Let's see. So let's go back to the village here. As you can see, I have maybe 30 locations keyed here. Maybe not that much, but um, it's enough to uh, role play this town. Um, but I only have like three uh, chapels detailed here. And this is one of a sizable town close to the city of Verbabank. So easily, um, maybe uh, the fishermen down at the docks, uh, this person right here on number um, 38, um, he, maybe he's a minor priest of some religion that you can convert over the NPC to be able to handle that. Um, you got all these farms out here. They, the, the man of the house or the woman of the house could easily be a priest or something. So that can always be added in the campaign. But at least all the meat is here to be able to do, do that. And I, and I actually let players drive this. If a player really wants to be from somewhere because they like the location and they really want to pray, uh, they would really want to be a cleric or a druid or a paladin of a certain faith, I'll, I'll go ahead and custom create that location for them. I'll create an NPC or a couple of NPCs and a location in that village. And I've done that before. All right, let's go ahead and move on uh, to the next location. We'll get rid of Ederbuck. And uh, let's go ahead down to Penwick. So Penwick, um, I have an interactive map here. So we can zoom in and scroll around and stuff. I browsed this map and relabeled it. Um, I need to remake this map next. I believe I did. This campaign is uh, ongoing development. I'm always finding something to add to the campaign. And originally, um, I brought this map for Penwick and I keyed it for all the locations. As you can see, they're all clickable. 
But what I also did lately, which I haven't imported yet, is created my own map in Wonder Draft. So uh, Penwick has a, a town square, and they're all keyed with numbers. I still have to import this into World Anvil and then actually attach all the articles to these numbers. Uh, I thought I did that, but I haven't done that yet. So that's something that needs to be done. Um, so we have this map here of the village uh, with several churches and chapels and manors and a guard tower right in the middle. So we, we're, I'm going to have to use the other map to, to show you the locations. Um, I always put a chapel um, symbol over the chapel. So we'll start off with uh, we'll start with the Druid's Grove actually into the, in the woods over here. So let's go ahead and click on that. So the Druid's Grove, P24, Gardi is the local Druid of Diri, the Lady of Autumn. Uh, is the core of the old faith and o Orth Mother. It's said to visit this mystical forest. They venerate Bari or Obed High. Come here. Those two, um, rangers who venerate Bari or Obed High come here for inspiration. Uh, so, you know, there's not many rangers uh, are popular. To, uh, you won't see many rangers uh, roaming around the Bike County itself. There are ones that most of them work for the mounted borderers uh most uh rangers are probably from the gnarly forest but it's not unheard of for a ranger to be from the Viscounty county for various reasons trained probably by the militia or a huntsman of a village or maybe a protector of a grove so that's another idea for a background for a character for a ranger so um a, a druid can be from here too of course and guardy would be his mentor I have an appearance for him, and um, we have dialogue that he speaks of. And I have a little quest at the bottom here that I added. Um, he's a fifth level druid, and there's his stats, his motivation. Um, he has a thing against the smithy in town. So that's the whole thing. He wants revenge. Uh, smithy has been polluting something. Um, so let's go ahead back to the village again. On the map, after the druid grove would be uh, the first symbol right here, T13. Let's go there. The Church of the Gentle Hand. The church is dedicated to Zodal, uh, the flan god of mercy, hope, and benevolence. Uh, Zodal is a servant of Rayo and Jeremy's estranged lover. He's allied with Heronius and Pelor. Uh, as, the name as the name implies, this church is staffed completely by women, nuns of Zodal. Um, Eli, Langerkvist, Langerkvist, is the high priest and only a few wandering priests male are seen on staff with quarters well away from the main docile. Most of the nuns are from first to third level clerics. Uh, sees a woman in simple gray robes. He considers even the most hateful and destructive gods to be her friends, for she believes that with enough effort on her part, they might change their ways. She continues um, Zodal's and her administrations, despite the evil pain on the world, believing that her efforts will eventually make a change. So that this is an article I have to edit. Um, goods and services. Um, they have healing services, of course, just like in Verbabank. Um, the nuns offer relief from pain, anger, and despair. They accept all decrees. Um, they'll take anybody in, even escaped slaves, orcs, madmen, and etc. Uh, madmen are something that can easily happen to carry uh, some evidence or information in the campaign because maybe they escaped from their captors or a dungeon. Uh, the cost here is uh, free to any of the devout, of course. Uh, the faithless gets minor wounds cured. Uh, I created this uh, holy symbol here because there's none available anywhere. So I created that myself. And uh, so, yeah, that's a great location to be from. So let's go ahead and go back. I found P13 to uh, T12. P12. On the Church of St. Cuthbert of Penwick, the center of community life, the church is a built of stone, sturdy, and rather plain. Um, Gustav Lagerfeld, canon of St. Cuthbert, holds regular services on holy days. He's an ordained priest of St. Cuthbert, tends to the village's spiritual needs. It's, this also doubles as a community hall for weddings and important community occasions. Each morning, he doles out work assignments to the assembled members of the village for, on the church steps. I don't have an NPC detailed out here. I just have his name. So that has to be developed still. A, a person with um, personality. But yeah, a cleric could easily be from Penwick of St. Cuthbert. And this is a perfect place for that. Okay, let's go back. And uh, 
you know, that's as I said earlier, um, at least it's there. So if a cleric player decides he likes Penwick and wants to be from St. Cuthbert, I can create that um, character instantly and connect it to the politics in the area. Okay, TP16. Uh, this is the Church of the Shining One, uh, the church dedicated to Pelor. It's a modest rectangular building, exterior walls, colorful structure, painted wood, you know, description. So, uh, at this, as this is the only chapel dedicated to Pelor in the eastern Vi County, so all the villages over here, this is the only one. So once you pass uh, Penwick, you know, you're leaving it behind. You know, you don't have support. Um, Bishop Lamus is having a tough time gaining followers from the Church of St. Cuthbert and Zodal. So I guess uh, the the, villa, the locals favor St. Cuthbert and Zodal here in Penwick, and he's having a tough time getting followers. He spends much of his time tending the sick and wounded, even lends a hand with farm animals and horses to gain favor of the townsfolk. I guess that's it would be beneath a cleric to be a, a vet <laughs> for farm animals, but he's got to do it to be able to get some converts. Um, he sends weekly letters to the Archbishop Charles Evertide back in Verbavank, and he sends his junior priest to grow the church. But to this date, he's alone except for the guardsmen and the church hands. Uh, Sir Arendt Calgrim does not allow Lamus to cast any light from his bell tower after sundown. Um, that's one of the nobles of Penwick. Uh, he's not really favored there. Uh, yeah, that's a good plot, you know, background for a character. You know, um, this priest here, uh, Bishop, I suppose, as he's a bishop, Lamus, uh, wants the character to, um, to spread his uh, faith maybe eastward or southwards because this is the last church in the area. And, or maybe there's a problem and maybe they can make themselves look good by tackling this problem by sending the player there. So that's a good, pl uh, good hook there. Okay, let's go back. Uh... So we did three of the four of those, and I believe that's all of them. So let's go ahead and check the article itself of Penwick. The article of Penwick. Uh, I have a full description, of course. Oh, there's my map. Um, I did import it into the article itself, but I haven't created an interactive map to replace the one I have. Um, it, the village itself is on the border of House Millenius and House Osbury. There's her standard there. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the... So we, we have the Church of St. Cuthbert of Penwick, the Church of the Gentle Hand. Uh, we have the Church of the Shining One and the Druid Grove. And I think that's it. Um, any one of these NPCs at any of these businesses could easily be a priest of something. And one of them might even be, but I don't want to go through every one of them. I got some commoners here that live there to use in a pinch. Okay. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. I've been looking for this picture everywhere. I I took this picture into Photoshop and I added the holy symbol of Farlong, as you can see at the top the steeple there. So on the way into Penwick, I have the players on along the road on see this empty shrine with some offerings on its steps from passengers, from travelers along the road. Often uh, merchants and other priests will make a donation here as they pass by. It's not manned. There's nobody here to take care of it. You can see it's been untended for a long time. But it's an interesting little thing to add to the flavor to the campaign and to uh, support Farlong in the, in the campaign itself. Okay, so we're done with uh, Penwick. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to... Uh, Let's go ahead and bring up the other map of the Eastern Vi County. So we did Ederbuck, we did Penwick. There's the long road. I finally labeled it. Um, let's go check um, Fullhurst Moors and Anshin. There are two villages I created for the campaign because I felt that those two locations were great locations for very small villages like a Thorpe, right on the edge of the swamp, and they live they they live off the swamp. You know, they gather the rare herbs and uh, they hunt the creatures there um, but they're not doing very well and they see hardly very little commerce few merchants go there and i do have a church at each i'll just show you real quick uh fullhurst moors um it has a mercantile a hut <laughs> a house another home for the mayor 
the Temple of St. Cuthbert's here. So I did place a Temple of St. Cuthbert here, and he's run by uh, Esmond Wynne, a fifth level cleric. So if the player really wanted to be on the edge of things, um, he definitely can be from here. Great place to be from. Uh, the, tiver the tavern's called the Bell and Whistles. Bulgrim runs it. Villa Tall, a wizard's tower, and demographics. So I only have, and some rumors here, I only have one church. And there, there it is right there. I only have one church uh, here, and that's St. Cuthbert, but of course, several more could be from here easily. Okay, let's go back. Uh, now, the Anshin, I'll show real quick. Mm, let's go ahead and open that up further. We got quite a bit going on there. A full description riding into town for the adventure. And there's the map. Um, the swamp is overtaking the town. So to, to the south, it's all, the ground is very um, wet and mushy. Your feet sink into the ground. And there's a wall holding back the swamp to the northern part of town. And there's a new uh, guard tower on the, on the right to the east. A, a new mounted border or outpost is being constructed there. And there's a captain and his men are there too. So you got the manor, you got the mill. Oh, another church of St. Cuthbert is here. And that's run by uh, Waldir Elvery. And awesome. I'm going to put an apothecary here, of course. And there's the tavern, the bog and barrel. Uh, the swine pits. We've got a lot of pigs here. The jolly farmer is the uh, tavern. And I got a bunch of rumors. Got a mayor. I got a lot of no notable people here keyed out. I got stables, the guard tower for the mounted borderers, um, the swine pits, uh, the marsh witch. The old Aggies is a uh, apothecary. See, I have all these rumors here for the campaign, and you can get a lot of these rumors from either the tavern or from her, especially um, rumors about the swamp. Um, this is what the town looks like to the south. A lot of the buildings are in ruins. Okay, so the only thing I have keyed here is St. Cuthbert. But easily, especially uh, priests, the faiths of the old, the old faiths could be here, from here um, easily. You could place. So let's go ahead and get out of there. Uh, so now let's go to, uh, let's see, what else do I have on this map? Mm, I want to do, finish the east. We're not going to do Nolb. Nolb does have a church there. It's the elemental church. You know, the Church of Elemental isn't evil. It's more neutral because they worship the, um, you know, the fire, earth, water, and, and uh, fire, the elements. And it's neutral in effect. So that's what they worship there publicly. So there's a public church there. You can walk in, go to a sermon. I have all that written out too, full sermons, what it looks like when they're all worshiping in there. Um, you could have a player from there being a cleric of the uh, cult of elements, the cult of a uh, elemental cult, um, and, and not be evil. And I guess maybe he's aware that there's some bad people in the area. But I think that would complicate the campaign too much. He'd know too much too soon. Um, I try to steer my players away from Nolb from the first five levels and keep them busy uh, west of here uh, until they're high enough level to deal with it. So... Because at first level, I send them this way, um, to the fens, and then this ancient school temples over here. I'll show you where it's at. There it is. So uh, I, I have a, a farm. Come on, show me. I have a farm here. Something happens. I have a bat, wandering monster, a wandering monster, and then there's the ancient school temple. Um, I have an old cabin, hunter's cabin here. Um, this is where the goblin caves are right here. I'll show you that, just for the heck of it. See, I made that in Dungeon Craft, and I fully keyed it. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go back. And there's the bridge of Emerald Meadows where um, Lady Asbury's parents died when they made the last stand to hold back the forces of the elements, elemental evil armies. They give uh, the forces of the Viscounty time to organize, to resist. In the campaign, that's their first uh, camp out in that tent marked on that spot right there. Okay, uh, let's check out Mole since it's on the map. Why not? I don't have really any maps for Mole. Anything west, 
of the long road I didn't develop is I don't have the players going that direction anytime soon. It's a small town. Uh, religion. Here we go. There is a shrine to Marika, origin demigoddess of agriculture. Same, same kind of place as uh, Edinburgh, where the local farms go. There, it's more like a, a club, a guild, but it's a priesthood and that runs it. So, that's all I had keyed there. I know that's boring, but you could add more. I'm not too worried about it because they're not there yet. Okay, let's go down to Dusuit's Ford. Um, I got a map that I borrowed, labeled it, and I added the compass marks on it and stuff. You know, the valleys to the south, to the north is Ederbuk. Um, So, let's go to the key. Um, it's not keyed at all. Okay, the manor. I borrowed that. It's good enough minor for my use if they decide to go visit the noble there. Desut, Lord Desut. Um, I got full verbose description I wrote out. Um, then we got the guard post, uh, an inn, um, a tailor, stables, corral. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. It's just a home. It's Telic Verdun's home. Um, yeah, another one. Uh, traders, we can go buy and sell, run by that person there. Um, Bleakstone House, it's the Bleakstone family. Desuit's Manor, that's where Lord Desuit is. It's number 10. Uh, chapel of Phaeton, there we go. We finally got a Chapel of Phaeton going on here. Um, God of Nature, Beauty, and Farming. So this is the Sewell version of the other uh, chapels that we were looking at, Marika, um, and where, they, where the farmers come to uh, organize their efforts in farming and to get advice and training and blessings for their crops. And that's what the priesthood of Phaeton does. So if the player wanted to be a Phaeton, they can easily be from here. There's also a shrine to the Earth Mother, Barry. Um, so family and agriculture. So this is more, they do the same thing, but they also focus more on actual, um, the family, you know, like pregnancies and the home and, and, and raising the kids and treat, you know, making sure they're, and they also advise on farmers and crops and stuff like that. Uh, then we got a bunch of rumors, of course. So I have two churches here, uh, Phaeton and uh, Barry. Okay, let's continue past these suits forward. So let's get to the big map here. Uh, Garagil, Eglath, Okan. Um, let's go ahead and go through them real quick. Let's see if there's any churches here. Uh, a tower, a pier, uh, a court, and a manor, and an, an inn and tavern, a bridge, a uh, cathedral dedicated to Khan and community. Um, I have to re-edit this, but that would be another community. And there's quite a bit more here. Yeah, I have to edit this article. I just threw it in there until I was ready to tackle it. It's like a placeholder. Um, but of course, uh, Osprim and those three water gods um, definitely would be uh, worshipped here because a lot of these people that live in Gargill are, are fishermen. Um, Eglath, that should be a little bit more um, detailed here. Nope. There's very little information here. Um, let's go ahead and check the big article just in case. I don't do too much to um, certain locations. I know the pl the players will not be going to anytime soon. I only have so much time on my hands. In the four years I've been working on this, uh, as an alchemist, yeah, nothing about priests. So it has to be developed. Obviously, um, anything to do with fishing would be worshipped here, and something else. I'll, I'll just have to add it when I can. So if a player wanted to be from here, um, you can just add more. And they could be from here, no problem. Or maybe they were from here, then they ended up in Verbabank, the city. So, uh, then we got Okan. Um, all the villages up the river here don't have too much detail, but I just want to get them out of the way. Uh, so we got uh, nobles and uh, the forest. So here we go. Let's open this up. We got the old faith here. Uh, okay, 
Uh, here we go. The town is constantly engaged in harvesting trees to support the craftsmen. They maintain a friendship with inhabitants of the Gnarly Forest through a, a variety of means. Uh, there's an annual tree planting festival and planting. I guess that's to appease the priests, the druids. Uh, planting during Luna's full moon. Uh, so they, they take part in planting trees in the deforested areas where they're blessed by druids of Obed High. Yeah, Obed High would be the first to stand up and, and fight back against something like this. So they have to appease them or that town's going to be in a lot of trouble. You don't want the um, the druids of Obed High of the Gnarly Forest against you. They'll turn the whole forest against you. They'll get the Fae involved and it'll be really bad news for them all. Uh, there's a local mayor. Uh, there's also... Um, High Priest of Barry, Barry, um, the Guild Hall. That's about it. Okay, so th it's interesting about that background of Oakham, though. That that's happening. So a player could be from one side or the other. They can be from the town, and um, they have to appease the gnarly forest, the druids, and or they could be from the druids, and their their master or their priest is. Um, He's one of the ones that's watching the town, and he's the one that's got to be appeased. So that's always a thing. Like an agent of the druids are there, or nearby anyway, in a grove. Yeah, I'd place him in a grove outside the village somewhere, and it's his job to monitor the village to make sure they're doing their job, making sure they're appeasing and taking care of the forest. So that'd be an interesting person to be from, a place to be from. Okay, let's go back. Mm, okay. Daymouth is more of a port city, a port village. I don't think there's anything terribly exciting about it when it comes to religions, but let's find out. Uh, they do a lot of trade. Here we go with, with divers. They're, they're a great trade port. Be courier services run and a lot of trade between divers and Verbobank. Obviously, it's a good location for that. Uh, so there, there's a chapel to Pelor on the western edge of town. So Pelor is represented here uh, officially so far. Uh, I think it's part of the actual... The shipping yard's huge. That's what I was trying to get to earlier. Um, there's a person on location there. He, um, he's a ranger. So he's probably in charge of pretty much the same thing as uh, Okan. Making sure they don't get carried away with the forest and get in trouble. Or maybe he also helps with... Um, like search and rescue and um, helping people out and fighting back incursions of uh, monsters in the area. So it's another great place to be a ranger too, by the way. Uh, so let's go to Stalmire. It's a small town on the river. Uh, there's events of the Gnarly that they have to deal with. It's popular. Um, it's a home to the Green Jerkin Rangers of Thirundi. Oh, it's on the other side of the river. Okay, so if you want to be a ranger from Thirundi, um, you could be from this village. Uh, so it has nothing to do with the Viscounty at all. So if you don't find that you want to be... You want to be different. You don't want to be another one of those rangers that are with the... Um, the rangers of the Gnarly or the Mounted Borderers. This is another option. And of course, um, there would be a druid in the area. Um, to, with the same purpose of being there. And uh, as the other villages that we just talked about. Oxen House, um, the town's the main base. Is a they wear green and brown. They have elite scouts. Uh, they 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 guard the fellow rangers. So the small northern fringe of the gnarly forest is logged for a moderate yield of ip, yarpik, and a few groves of delclo. Uh, the quality of wood cut here is fair. It's Less dark and dangerous than most of the Gnarly Forest, with fewer monsters. But it's also really not far from the Temple of Elemental Evil. So the Green Jerkins do keep careful watch. That could be a great plot hook to the Temple of Elemental Evil. Something happened. Um, the Temple uses brigands and a pirate. And when it comes to pirates, look at this. You see Enmerdi's run? It ends up in Thaymouth. It starts in Thaymouth off the Veldiver River, Belver Diver River, and it travels south directly straight to uh, Nulb. And pirates use that river all the time. And they prey on merchant ships all the way up the run, all the way up to the big river and farther. 
So um, they all have their hands full with the activities activities of the Temple of Elemental Evil, even though they, well, the, with the pirates, they don't know they're really in league with this organized up, uprising of the Temple of Elemental Evil yet. No, 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 no officials know this, and the players don't know that either. Okay, let's go to Ruby Falls. Yeah, that we're still in the Viscounty, so that's why we're going over it. Okay, so Ruby Falls is the very northern tip of the Viscounty, south of the Velver Diver River. There's a shrine to the Druids of the Old Faith, the Old Druid Barthenu. Yeah, we should look at this article. Take a look at what it has. Oh, I like this map. So look at that. We're right here in the northern part of the Viscounty. The Gold County is right across the river. Interesting. Okay, uh, Ruby Falls. Uh, there's an old druid, Barthenu. Uh, Ruby Falls is a small village in the between the Cron Hills and the Nali Forest. Um, that description is not really accurate. Uh, it's mostly made up of gnomes, though. There's a good deal of humans and dwarves as well. So we're looking for chapels. Uh, the low road. Some of the descriptions are a little bit off, I noticed. Uh, there's a history here that only the DM would know and share with the players. Um, a player could be a gnome from here or a dwarf um, or the old faith. So I expect um, based on what we read already that uh, the old faith would be here for the same reasons. To make sure the town doesn't overgrow its bounds and destroy the the forest around it. Uh, I didn't label which of the old faith is here, so most obviously Obed High uh, would be watching the town and making sure that they're uh, being playing nice with the forest. Of course, the, the town itself needs some chapels, which I haven't developed, so you'd have to pick several, I think, to go there, which I haven't done yet. Okay, continue from there. We're in towns I haven't developed yet because the campaign hasn't gone this far. So Ketter's Hearth. Um, take a look at that. Uh, it's a port town in the northeastern part of the Viscounty. So Brenton Drenton Vaswell's Lord and Governor. Uh, the rough train of the gnarly gives way to cobblestones as you emerge from the forest into the wooded vale. Several small villages next to a meadow. Must be a pretty place. Uh, a couple of taverns, a general store. Uh, many cottages have seen better days. They collapse, they collapse under the weight of snow, debris, and, and the elements. Ice covered. Um, the wandering minnow, far side of town. Um, there's a pennant here to the third company of the Mounted Borderers. Um, there's a bunch of bardic knowledge here. Um, locations. So I did key some of these locations here. So let's see if one of these are a chapel. The first one is a library. The Wrinkle Library. The Bearded Maiden obviously is a tavern. Um, the Oak General Store. Farthest Stone. Mounted Borderers Outpost. The Hearth is uh it's just a marketplace the tavern of the two foot traveler to a halfling in uh unicorn's main herbalist shop the veridic veridicum white tower it's it's a church to saint cuthbert so there we go we do have a church to saint cuthbert here i'm not sure if i have this in my main article i might have missed it because of the name so there you go there's a church there. The Woven Pine is a, a gnarly ranger outpost. Okay. Rangers can be from here. St. Cuthbert. And of course, obviously, it's got to have some more churches and chapels. And also, um, there's got to be some grove nearby watching this place. Because if you look at the map. See? Oh, it's labeled Low Road. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, Carter's Meadow is here too. So let's take a look at that. Uh, Carter's Meadow is 150 woodsmen. It's a it's a woodsman village. Woodcutters, people that live off the out of the woods. 
Uh, Spring-fed farms abound. They hunt game. Uh, they're regulated by a score of now the rangers. Um, and doesn't really talk about any kind of chapels here. But obviously, same thing. There's got to be a grove nearby watching this, these places. And they do work closely with the Gnarly Rangers, too, obviously. I don't have any chapels developed here, but there should be. Uh, Terra Vert is in the Viscounty. Let's take a look at that. It's Elf and Gnarly Ranger base. <laughs> Completely unkeyed so far. Okay, uh, then further east is more into the divers area. Doesn't mean you can't be from there. I'm just not covering it. All right, let's go back down to the Viscounty farther south. Twilight Falls, here we go. Twilight Falls is as far as east you can get. Um, there's an old uh, map from one of the living Greyhawk modules, I believe. Um, so they have a, their, 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 their trails are, are intersected by, from divers to Celine to Verbavank and Narwhal. So a lot of traffic comes through here, a lot of merchant trade. So these are definitely caravans. Um, there is a complex dedicated to Farlong. Great place to be from Farlong, by the way. I mean, this place is a hive of activity of merchant trade. And obviously everybody travels by foot or, or horse or a wagon. Um, mithril Hill, there's gold and mithril in the hills, ipwood in the forests. Uh, people flock to the growing, it's a growing town. Uh, there's ruins of an ancient Elvland outpost and two giant trees flank the waterfall at the center of town. Interesting. Um, there's uh, bardic knowledge, politics. Yeah. But there's no keyed um, buildings here yet because I don't have a player from here. If a player wanted to be from here for the reasons I explained earlier, um, I would actually create a chapel here if it fits in the community. So it's a good place to be from. Okay, we got all that stuff out of the way to the east. So let's go back to the other map here. Um, now we're in the southern Vi County. So we, we looked at Dishut's Ford already. Let's go ahead and go down to Cienega Valley. Uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and look at the full article. There's several chapels here. Um, I have a map. So, the first first place you want to look at, of course, is Church of the Cudgel. Great, great name, Church of the Cudgel. That's number six. Let's go ahead and put this over here, and let's take a look at it. Full description of uh, what it looks like going in. Um, Ostel Pengeli. Canon of St. Cuthbert holds regular services and holy, on holy days. Ordained priest of St. Cuthbert tends to the village's spiritual needs. Uh, the weddings and community occasions. Uh, he has, I have it keyed based off the Temple of Elemental Evil. I'm um, sorry, the village of Hamlet key. And then himself, I um, have a picture and uh, you know his what he does and his personality and his history. And then we also have uh, some politics here. So him and Yvonne Cross of the Shining Temple of Pelor and Tanathil Morinala of the Hearth of Obed High, the Druid's Grove in town, along with Gigurd Nunnison and the current Guildmaster of the, of the Vintners Guild Hall, um, they work together closely, almost like a, a council. A village council but the village does have a mayor but he does use these are the people that he uses as uh advisors for the for the village and he any any anything they need or want he pays close attention to them he wants to make them happy he also works with the um the commander of the mounted borderer fort uh, fort emrady i believe it's called and he's got stats and he's fully flushed out there with items all right, great place to be from. So let's go back. If you want to be a priest of St. Cuthbert. Um, let's continue with uh, the Shining Temple of Pelor, number eight. Here we go. 
uh, description of the place. And uh, it's run by Yvonne Cross. I got a map. I got stuff he says, which is cool. Uh, Yvonne Cross is right there. He's the canon. Um, they talk about the goods and services where they heal people and people can stay there in the common rooms for two copper a night. Great. Um, Yvonne Cross himself, um, he uh, got a description of him and his background and history. Um, he spends a lot of his time tending the sick, blessing crops, and providing basic spiritual needs to Sinega Valley. Uh, he's at odds, often at odds with Frodi Storley, the priest of St. Cuthbert, and Tanathal Moranel, the Druid of Ovid High, of the Druid's Grove. So all three often come to an argument over the use of the Village of the Green for some ceremonial events. Um, there's no need to... Even if no one has need of the green, they still complain to House Osbury that others are using the green more often than they should be. So that's pretty funny. Um, she has her hands full, keeping all three satisfied. And and along with the contention of Sir Millenius's men that are there at the inn. Uh, so anyway, she often allows um, the mayor and Armount to handle such things. He's melodramatic, relaxed, a preacher. Moments of stress becomes intolerant. And he's got stats. Great place to be if you want to be from Pelor. Okay, so let's keep going here. After Pelor. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the hearth of Obed High. The village of the Greens right here, that's what we were mentioning. Um, it stands between, it lays between Fort Emmerdy to the east and the village itself to the west. Just south is the hearth of Obed High. Number two, a description of the um, grove. And I have some, you know, verbose um, dialogue there to use in role playing. Uh, his duties, he patrols the area for hostiles. He tends to the health of the ecosystem, whether that to be encouraging growth in some or culling in others. That includes humanoids. Um, to celebrate the change of the seasons with rituals of thanks and blessings in exchange for power of magic, renewal and death. To serve the needs of the land and preserve the balance and harmony. Uh, he, uh, he has a history. So fortunately for the townsfolk, a wandering druid saw that the town was in dire need of some guidance so they could grow without spoiling the beauty of the natural area. He took over care for the green and worked not only to restore, but to enhance the beauty of the area. After many prayers and devotions, he went so far as to concentrate a portion of land as a grove dedicated to Obed High. The grove consists of many tulip trees, several large oaks. The altar is surrounded by large pines that give it a nice shade and protected it from almost all the elements. The altar was carefully shaped from living teak wood that was brought from afar. Um, it stands as a place for all the residents of the valley and a reminder that beauty should be preserved, not crushed by stone, buildings, and progress. Uh, What's the stuff I put in here to use? He's got full stats and equipment. Uh, he's got a companion. I think it's a badger. Uh, so that's a great place to be from uh, if you want to worship Obed High. And you don't want to be from the Nolly Forest. You want to be the, from the human lands. All right, let's go back. Um, let's look at the article so I can find more of these places. I don't want to just scroll around, lost. Between all these farms and these mills and these inns and taverns and marketplaces and apothecaries and forts and vineyards and fishermen. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else, but let's double check real quick. Returning to the article of Cienega, we're going to go ahead and look at all the locations to see if we missed any chapels. And sure enough, we have um, number 26, Chapel of the Home. Let's take a look at that. Um, this chapel is presided by Goslik Stensma. Dedicated to Marika, the Ored and demigoddess of ag agriculture, farming, and the home. Uh, so they're interested in, uh, they, they assist the farmers and the vineyards in agricultural and farming. They bless the crops. Uh, they predict the weather. They assist in the home as well, uh, uh, the families that live on the land. And uh, often he's at odds with the druid, Tanathil Mornala, Mornala and of the Druid's Grove of Obed High. And the next location, 
would be uh, the Chapel of Growth. And I think these are opposites. Because, yeah, this is Ork Dinnum. Uh, he's the priest of Phaeton. He's the god, Sulu, Sulu god of nature, beauty, and farming. So same thing. He supports the farmers and the vineyards in the area, um, but also of nature and beauty. He wants everything to look really nice, but um, he also um, fully supports the farming. So they're going to be at odds with Obed High because farms always want to expand their farm. They want to grow. They want to chop down woods, and they want to make more land to farm on. And um, you can't just do it without the the druids of Obed High uh, fighting back or saying no or taking a stance. You know, they'll probably, if they try to do this without permission, um, I'm sure the druid will show up with his spells to uh, have the forest rise up <laughs> against the laborers trying to clear the land. And that would be bad. But um, Phaeton um, is on the side of, uh, of the farmers. They want them to farm and clear land and, and support uh, in a beautiful way. And so does the Marika. But I think they're more focused on family and farming. So I think they're all going to be at, at odds all the time. Because this is a this is a growing community. And these farms are expanding. They've already expanded way too much. In the eyes of um, the old faith. Uh, so it's politics. Uh, he's at odds with everybody. With, for the druids. Uh, holds a stance that there's no more for farmland growth. He absolutely refuses for the farms to grow any more than they are now. And of course, uh, the farms, farmers want that, and they're supported by Fight and, and Marika for that. So there's a lot going on there. Okay, let's continue. Um, I believe that's all the churches I developed in this. Yep, it is for Cienega Valley. So we'll go ahead and close that. And we're going south now to the village of Hamlet. On the village of Hamlet, um, I use this map, and so uh, obviously the first location of Hamlet is uh, the Church of Saint Cuthbert. We all know what that is. Um, great place to be from. Um, the old can canonist is left, canonist de Fay, and now he's uh, it's been taken over by Calmert. You could be from there if you wanted to be. Um, of course, then as well is a Druid grove right here of Obed High. Uh, the Grove, um, and his name was, I, I lost track, oh yeah, Jaru, uh, Jaru Ashstaff. Um, you easily could be a, a druid from there as well, if you wanted to be, and you'd, obviously, if you were from the village of Hamlet, you would pretty much know 90% of the lore or um, the rumors around town already, just from being from here. But I don't know if a dungeon master would want that in their campaign because it's more fun to discover things in a campaign than to know it up front. But it's up to you. You know, it could be fun that way too if one player from this location is already from here. Um, I believe that's the only two religions here. I think I remember a source where they added something else, but I don't remember what that was. So we'll skip that for now. So that's the village of Hamlet. Um, we did uh, the valley. Uh, Penwick, or finish with Penwick. I'm going to close all these places out. Okay, so let's go ahead and look south here. Uh, where We did the village of Hamlet, and um, Far Downs right here is just a farming community. It's not really a town, and it's owned by Lord Gallons. Um, they, they, one of the farmhands or somebody might be a priest of the Old Faith, but that's about it. Nothing else there. Okay, uh, so let's go down south, down to Sheer Knob. Uh, Sheer Knob is fully developed for the gnomes. So let's go ahead and open that. So here's Sheer Knob, the article. Um, and I have a map that I provided um, in my Patreon. If you want to support me further, go to my Patreon and sign up, and I'll, I'll provide maps I create and articles for the campaign so you have access to that. And you can support me for doing more work in the future. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the full size here. So I haven't created the art, the interactive map for this yet, for this town. It's just the map, but I did number it. Um, so it does have some chapels, but they're all dedicated to the gnomes. Um, and the main chapel really is right here in the Moot Hall, number one. And that's the um, Killeen himself, the original founder, Shirinab Killeen, a statue to him. 
that animates as an illusion and plays a flute and dances and winks at people as they go by. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. Location one is the Moot Hall. Um, I have a description. Uh, as you walk into the Moot Hall, carved over the door as you walk in is Neteferaku uh, Kriu Yen Neverlu. So if you see it, it's not the right it. It's the phrase used to remind the gnomes that their first appearances can often be deceiving and to look deeper for the truth. So it's the biggest building. It's the feasting hall. It's also reserved for village gatherings. But across the foyer, across the hall, there is, uh, well, there's tapestries that decorate the other walls. There's a mural that depicts wild landscape, brightly beautiful gemstones, and fruitful gardens. And the chapel itself is called Temples to the Priceless Gem. It's unassuming and hidden. Um, but often these temples are unassuming, often magically hidden shrines and chapels at the heart of the Gnomus community. Circular domed ceiling divided by four quadrants, gold leaf studded with gold nuggets. So what I did was is there's a in the description, there's a, a pair of double doors and it's tied off by a rope on the other side of the moot hall, going down, down these steps to these pair of double door, gold, gold um, gilded double doors with a rope um, locking it in so you can't open the doors without removing the rope. And what's interesting is the rope itself is a rope of brilliant gems. So any rogues or, or money focused players in the group looking for loot who is going to get our eyes are going to get real big when they see that and they're going to know it's going to be bad news um i have glyphs attached to it you know to protect entrance into the chapel so that's the main chapel for all they they, they honor all the gnome pantheon gods are behind those doors in that domed chapel beyond so that's it for uh this location there's no other chapels at all or need to be any other chapels for any other gods uh, let's see. So we're done with Sheer Knob. And we're going to go look at um, one south. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at Gallows Corner. It's, it's, it's in a corner of the Viscounty. It's almost all but Forgotten Village. Nobody ever pays att much attention to it. So, um, nestled between sizable acreages of rural farmland, a sprawling settle settlement is suddenly revealed as you approach. Uh, this is a halfling community. So the halfling community does have several, um, look at all these locations, quite a bit on the right here. Uh, so when it comes to uh, a chapel, there's, uh, let's see what we got here. The church, okay, the Sheely Paroles Farm. It's a halfling church. Uh, Priestess Tisha Grove Tender. So um, she preaches the uh, halfling pantheon. So if you want to be a halfling uh, cleric, great location to be from. Um, this isn't the only halfling village of the Vai County, and it's also not the only village uh, community of the areas around the Vai County either. There's some in Ferrandi, there's some in Valuna. But this is the closest place you can be, actually, to the action, is this village. It's, it's kind of out, out of the way. Um, is there anything else here? I think there was there's supposed to be a, uh, a temple to St. Cuthbert here as well. But I, I didn't think much of that idea, so I think I removed it. Um, here's number five, Shrine to Berry. So this is an open, uh, un, unsupported shrine. This is an open shrine that's there. In devotion to Barry, and it's just tended by all the villagers, really. And I would expect that maybe one of the midwives or one of the uh, or men, maybe uh, the villagers, would be an actual priest or a druid of Barry, either one. And uh, a player character could be from there too, for the same reasons as the as the halfling. And I think that's it. That was Gallows Corner. As you can see from the map, there's Gallows Corner nestled within the Cron Hills at the base of the Lort Mill Mountains. So, so it's at a crossroads from Shirnob to Ostfirk, which is on the border to Selene. So let's go ahead and look at Ostfirk. 
And it does have quite a few shrines there, or a few. So Ostverk, I do have an interactive map for that. Uh, came from the Living Greyhawk era. And uh, so the shrines itself is two, I believe. Three. So I'll start at the top. The shrine, the Temple of Berry, is on top of the hill. Sendril is the high priestess there. And, uh, and, and the community, she's almost my, like in charge of the village. They all look up to her. The, the guard, the captain of the guard looks up to her. He likes her a lot. They have a relationship. And she pretty much is the pulse of the, of the community. Uh, this is a farming community, and they all go to her for everything. And uh, for home, family, and farming. Okay, then we have the Farlong Chapter House. Uh, they have stables and inn for travelers. It's almost like it's like a halfway house, a hostel. And um, I have a, a, a person there, a, a, a priest of Farlong, that is now here, um, not on a permanent basis, but he's been here for a while because he has a thing for the priestess of Barry as well. And then we have this priest, uh, this shrine of the lawful gods. So let's take a look at that. This is like a cat's all. Um, so there's a statue of the crumpled hat, St. Cuthbert. There's a wooden disc carved with curved lines of the horizon. That's Farlong. Painted statue of a giant wasp. That's Braum. Uh, there's a basket of grain sickle, Marika. Uh, the glowing headed hammer for Tubo. Uh, the pottery depicting a snow-capped mountain peak. That's Jaskar. So this shrine is dedicated to those gods. And, I, and there's always two die six worshippers can be found here in various phases of worship. Uh, one to four priest, a first to third level. Only Kath, a cleric of Farlong, lives in Osvark on a permanent basis. The other priests are traveling clerics. I would think that clerics of these faiths, you know, this place is important. Uh, it's really important, actually. Ostvark on the border of Selene. The only way to get into Selene from this end of the Orth is through here. And they have a border for it here. And you have to get permission to enter that um, that realm um, and uh, and sometimes it takes months to get permission so you have to stay here for a while if you really want to get in because it takes forever for the elves to make uh, to give permission uh, so a lot a lot of a lot of the priesthoods know this little shrine is here and it, it would be important to them to come visit it once in a while uh, so it's the will anyway uh, that's that location there See, let's go back to the map. Uh, and then there's the actual um, Kerr Ostverk, the border castle to the fairy kingdom of Selene. So the knight commander, Talarin Karawellin, um, he's the one that you have to get permission from to actually enter the border of Selene. Or, those, or knights of the Selene will actually stop you at the border. So, um, and of course, there's the taverns. There's three taverns here. All right, so that's um, Ostfurk. So let's move on to back to the main map here. I think we're done with the Southern Vi County. Uh, Chiselwood is a home of uh, a community of gnomes that I added to the group, added to the map. It's not on the Anna Myers map. Uh, it's a gnome utopia. Return to the times before strife and prejudice. It's a pretty nice place. Um, they have. Uh, locations here but they're not well developed there's a gnome barracks alchemist uh but i don't see no shrines here if there was a shrine here it'd be gnomus shrine that would be it it's a one half orc here but he's an alchemist she is so it'd only be gnome shrines uh humming's end um i don't think we did that one yet so let's take a look real quick maybe we did no, we haven't done that. Hey, I, I made that map. I forgot. I took an existing map and I edited the heck out of it to make it fit. <laughs> so that's the road right there going from uh, west to northeast. Pretty cool map. All right. Uh, so it's it's just brief because the can't, players really have no reason to ever go in there. But when they do, I'll have to develop it more. Of course, a player can be there. But what's important here is Ranger Wind 
Ranger Knight Win is from here. One of the players is a Ranger of the Gnarly, and um, Ranger Knight Win trained him. So I always have Ranger Knight Win come to him for missions. He'll give him a, he'll find, seek him out in the Viscounty or wherever he's at, like the village of Hamlet, and they'll give him a mission. And right now I'm running the Gift of Beauty, a living Greyhawk uh, module down in Ostfirk. So he gave him that mission. That's why they're down there. Um, that's one of the reasons why the players went down there for that mission. But my wizard has another reason to go down there too for another mission I gave him at the beginning of the campaign. So they got two reasons to go down there. And this is all to steer them away from Nolb, to level them up, as they're all third level right now. Druids of the Gnarly. So uh, the village at the edge of the Viscounty is the deepest in the forest of all the villages of the Viscounty. They revere Al Alona. For this reason, some have friends among the wood elves. Druids do not care for woodsmen, and they know that what they respect the forest. They welcome the Gnarly Rangers. Um, so that's all the actual details I have. It's just a general background. So you can develop, besides Ranger Not Win, which I developed, which I created a character for. I think I have a picture for him, too. Yeah, there he is. Um, he's got motivation and secrets and dialogue and stuff. Cat's phrases. Don't run. Only You'll only die tired. I like that. <laughs> Don't run. Uh, so uh, you got him. And then you'll if you want the local druid right here, so the mayor is Albion, Albion, and his wife is Jalwena. The local druid is Colin. So he would be the druid of Obadhai, Colin. He just needs a grove and a shrine and to develop the art character himself. Uh, there, there's probably another, it would be another shrine here for a more human-centric faith. I didn't develop it yet, but it'd be a good place to be from. Especially, you know, we haven't talked about that yet, but there's dual classing in the game. So what if you're a ranger cleric? That's a cool character, I suppose. So there'll be two reasons why you're here. Or maybe, I don't know, druid ranger, but that seems kind of redundant. But you'd be more, you know, you'd be better at combat. So maybe that'd be a good thing too. So something to think about. Uh, Okay, let's go back to the maps here. So, Ostfirk, we're done. Um, that's all the locations on this map. Yep. Greenway Valley um, has. Let's go look at the main map, and I'll tell you. I'll show you why. Here's Greenway Valley. You got Tolvar, Winalone, Yolen, and Thelakadi. Uh, those are gnome villages of the different clans of the gnomes, and they're just gonna have shrines on. Uh, dedicated to the gnome pantheon super easy super fast um i didn't develop npcs for them um tolvar has one i believe i developed one there because that's the capital of the gnome so if you're a gnome and, and you want to be a cleric or or something um uh, easily from here and it's real simple okay I'll start looking west wrap this up here there's not a lot developed west that wasn't part of the Living Greyhawk modules. We looked at Mole already. There's very little there. Uh, let's look at Swan real quick. Uh, I'm not going to bother looking at the full articles. There's a tavern. If I scroll down, it'll show me real quick what's there already. Shrine to Eula. There you go. The origin goddess of hills, mountains, and gems. There's a shrine dedicated to her. Um, I don't have an NPC named, though. Oh. No, I don't. Um, scrolling up is a library. Uh, oh, the Oaken Shrine. Constructed, no doubt, as a Cuthertine answer to the Shrine of Peacemaker. Yeah, we better open this article up because there's some important shrines here. The Shrine of the Peacemaker. At the Stone Shrine of Rayo um, is known as the Citizens of Swan. That's what they call it. It's built during the year... 146 common year. The shrine is really a large church. Received its current name during the giant wars. Mm. The shrine served as the main aims of peace and harmony. Uh, There's a lot of history here. The canon of Luna himself met the Cuthrebian 
Cuthbertine delegation at the talks and even the gruff Cuthbert priest Magnus Strom found him unexpectedly moved by the words of the canon. It's all history. Um, there's a Living Greyhawk module based here. And that's where I got these maps from, actually. Interesting. Um, this is farther along in the campaign. You have to be much higher level to do these modules here. Oh, there you go. There's a, uh, a chapel to Heronius. It's partially renovated. There's some history here. Um, the name comes from the name is the bejeweled halls of Heronius. Its name comes from many precious stones embedded in its walls, and they're mined locally. Father Joram, uh, the local cleric of Heronius, this building is dedicated to the worship of Heronius the Invincible. Polished stone altar, finished pews, stained glass windows, candelabras, candelabras. Um, it's decorated extensively, stained glass. There's a lot of description. Inside, the minister restored the Thunderstone. It's a local treasure. Interesting. Father Joram, one of the original inhabitants of the Thorpe of Swan and member of the family residing in the area of untold generations, tends to the stone and, and, and performs regular masses there. He leaves the training of warriors to others able defenders of the town. Uh, this is a really good background for somebody to be from Heronius. Um, so there's more about his politics and what's going on there, about the paladins of Heronius. The would-be warriors of Her Heronian faith from the surrounding countryside often train a nearby yard under the tutelage of the numerous paladins and other warriors of invincible native to the town. And there's the module that you get the information from, the swan and the crow. Okay, there's a stone shrine of Rayo. Um, it bears its age. It's quite grace, quiet grace and only truly aged structure can bear. Simple affair. Original structure consists solely of 30-foot domed roof. Interesting place. Um, the last 300 years, all the heroes are carved into the walls. Um, there's an inn, and then the mine, and the manor. Fort Wilfrick is here. Another tavern. A brewery. Okay, here we go. Church of St. Cuthbert. Deacon Mathis, a human cudgeler, greets travelers graciously. He knows that Cuthbertins in town well, but is less familiar with the residents. All the Heronians worship nearby the bejeweled halls. Okay, um, it is not detailed or flushed out, but that, that is a location with an NPC, a named a name. Town hall, salt mines, jewel mine, uh, farmer's market, a mill, um, barracks, uh, secrets, a shrine. So the Oaken Shrine, we talked about that earlier. Shrine of the Peacemaker, a library. A shrine to Eula. Okay, this place has quite a bit going on here, actually. It just needs to be flushed out more, with more detail. I did flush out uh, Fort Wilfrick, and the Tavern of the Two Foot Travelers is flushed out with NPCs. And the Baron, of course. All the nobles are flushed out in this campaign. And House Augustine is fully flushed out, too, with information. Okay, let's continue onwards. Let's get out of here from Swan. That was Swan. Ah, uh, Mole, Swan, Far Downs, Castle, Sarica, Sarkura. Um, I don't have much going on there. Okay, here comes Corbin, the village of Corbin. Um, it's a small village, I believe, and all oh, the bunch of shrines here. Let's go ahead and look at this. It's a secluded township. It occupies a large valley, um, predominantly area of rolling plains and low hills, numerous streams, clear water river, small freeholds and large vineyard estates, prominent families, relatives of the mayor. Okay, great. Corbin brandy is distinct in the method of production. Oh, they're famous for their Corbin brandy. 
Uh, sells for 40 gold pieces a bottle. Wow. Oh, it's called Golden Naga, the cheapest brand. While the two most expensive brands, RD Royal and Alvin Delight, sells for 500 gold pieces. You know, that's all third to distance stuff, but you could lower it. But still, it's impressive um, lore to go by. Uh, okay, the Wyvern's Roost. And we go farther. So let's look at the religion here. So there's three small chapels of the Old Faith and Sewell dedicated to ag agricultural farming in the home. You got Barry, you got Phaeton, and you got Marika. Um, you would find that these faiths are quite common in a lot of the small farming towns in the Vi County. Okay, let's continue. So after uh, Corbin is Abbey of the Valorous Knight. Um, that's a, a monastery of Heronius. And it's fully keyed with the bishop and the trainer of the paladins. I talked about that in the Viscounty, you know, City of Viscounty. I'm sorry, the City of Riverbunk article in, in uh, episode two. Okay, Larney Stowe. I believe that's my um, village for um, halflings. Let's take a look. Um, the, th the village thrives under the protection of the nearby Abbey of the Valorous Knight monastery dedicated to Heronius. The monks of the abbey watch over this town, it's not a city, and possesses a great deal of secular as well as religious authority. The right honorable Sir Fernand Crompox administers the land around Larnistow for Lord Wendell Reinhurst with the eyes of diligence, honor, and tradition. Uh, there's a pleasant pheasant inn uh, with NPCs, and that's it. That's all it's here. Uh, doesn't talk about... Um, so this is not the halfling village I was thinking of. It's human. So I would think that Larnistow is just a farming community, really. And they probably have um, some of the old faith shrines here for the farmers. That's what I would assume. It just happened. I haven't wrote, wrote it down. Austin Bolt. Let's take a look at that. A small village of gnomes, originally built into one large mound. <laughs> it's a large, like a hill, with a bunch of gnome holes in it, a warren. The gnomes skillfully dug their warrens into the sides of the hill, creating an underground village, linked by dozens of interconnecting passages. Windows and doors are cleverly built into the hillside so as to be seen, screened from sight by sod and brush and trees. So you really can't see this place, just walking by, unless maybe you're a ranger and you have eyes for this sort of thing and you, I don't know, you make your check. Uh, let's see, a few gnomes have built small, there are, are some small houses built by gnomes that dot the hill with sod covered mounds unnoticeable to all but the keenest eyed elves and gnomes and I would expect rangers to. Uh, this is part of a, a another Living Greyhawk module, a secret. And that's all that's developed here, unfortunately. Um, like I said before, I don't fully develop these towns unless it's, it's going to be more immediate need in the campaign. And then I'll, the players won't be from going here anytime soon. But if a player wanted to be from here, then I'd probably add a few locations for them. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. So uh, this is a village of gnomes. Oh, so that's a good thing. Okay, so we got Gnome Valley where all the gnomes live, the Greenway Valley. And then we have Sheer Knob, which is Gnome Village. And then we have that one location way to the south by Ostverk, uh, whatever that was called. That's a gnome village. And now we have this gnome village, Osnabralt. And um, it's not in um, the Greenway Valley. It's not in the hills. It's in the Vi County itself and the farmlands. Um, this, let's look at the map because, uh, yeah. You know what? See the uh, white line? Let's take a look. Oh, it is in the free assembly of the Kron Hills. Okay, see the red line? That's the free assembly of the Kron Hills. There's a couple of little valleys here with rivers. I should develop something right there in that little vale, that vale with a with a little lake or a pond. 
So Osnabrot is on the road from Valuna to get to the Greenway Valley. And it's the first uh, known village you would visit to get into the Greenway Valley. And Larnistow is the first village right outside Oops. Larnistow is the first village right outside the Greenway Valley along this road to Tolvar. I just never really noticed that before because I'm so zoomed out. That's the thing about these maps. Uh, they're not very detailed as you zoom in. They look great from a distance, but as soon as you start zooming in, they fall apart. I'm so used to kind of backing up looking at it. But if you zoom in, you can tell a little bit more detail about where these locations actually are. Uh, the Celeb... Slevara River is in the Viscounty. So here we go. Uh, let's look at Lawrence Ford. It's a Thorpe. It's on the high road leading through the Crown Hills and the road to Rhinehurst. Lawrence Ford is one of the few places along the Slevara River. It's easily crossed by wagon and ferry. The Thorn boasts several fine inns and a large shrine to Farlong. Many people in and around Lawrence Ford raise cattle and sheep. So this is a human village. We have a couple location uh, characters on location. We have a bard, Leah Songbird, and we have Thalma. So this is part of um, one of the Living Greyhawk modules, those characters are. Uh, the Splashing Pony is the largest inn that they have an innkeeper, his name is Keldon. And we have a way station of the Wanderer. The way station of the Wanderer is a uh, is a chapel dedicated to Farlong, and the cleric there, his name is Tama, eighth level cleric. So if you want to be from Farlong, this would be a wonderful place to be from. The blacksmith, the barracks, and that's it. Oh, and we have a manor picture from the module itself. Okay, uh, yeah, there would be more chapels from here, obviously. Uh, this is a farming community uh, for for cattle, I believe. And, uh, yeah, I would put other chapels here, too. So this is a great place to place something else as well. And along with the Old Faith uh, farmland type, like Marika. Um, it's located where the Valuna High Road crosses the Clearwater, home of about 150 halflings of stout blood. They dwell in small burrows, hence the name, which typically have only one door, a shuttered window, and a chimney. Carefree, working as much as they need to, they rarely interact with other communities of the Cron Hills. Uh, lazy and stuff. So, uh, the one inn is called the Galloping Pike, and the free town, uh, the free lady Stafina. It's a free town, by the way, the free town of Littleborough. But the free lady of Stafina, uh, she's no. There's no official mayor of Littleborough, but each year the inhabitants elect a sheriff. He's the liaison with the gnomes of the Greenway Valley. He's constantly going back and forth between the two communities. Uh, the halflings are very familiar with a tribe of centaurs that lives to the southeast. That's a good hook for our new player character. But when it comes to shrines, obviously there's going to be a chapel here dedicated to the halfling pantheon. Uh... And there's probably going to be a shrine to the Old Faith, definitely. Um, but it's not going to be Obed High, though. It'd probably be very, I would think. And not about a human-centric faith? I don't know. I don't know what would fit here. I guess mostly just halflings. So I don't think there'd be any human faiths. These are boroughs. You know, there's no actual buildings. Except for the inn, I believe. So I'd take that for what it's worth. Great place though to be a halfling, and I had, I ran a, I ran a campaign where one of the halflings was from here. He loved it. He thought this place was cool. I, I didn't develop it more than this though, which I should have, but I didn't have time. Uh, okay, so let's, let's wrap this up. So we have uh, a lot more to go. So let's go north. Uh, Witchstock, real quick. Uh, Witchstock is a township, North Low Road. Continues into the Ironwood, uh, Silver Mines of the Wyvern Roost, Walled Town. It's a walled town. Main industries are re related to the Ironwood. 
It's a primary known for its fine crafted musical instruments. Some are actually made for halflings and centaurs of Littleboro. Most come from local artisans. Uh, stringed instruments, lyres, lutes, fiddles are the most common. So the conservatories of Lydia and Aldemara boast membership of many of the great bards of the Flaness. And uh, poets and bards and troubadours compete for prizes. They're the elite of the central Flaness. Wealthy nobles and merchants from afar flock here. So it goes on about wine, in the industry of strong wine, uh, the current Lord Duntings. Uh, his father was killed in the Battle of Emerdy Meadows when he was six. But there's nothing here about chapels. So uh, Woodstock is probably got some halflings, some, but I think it's, it's human. So it does talk about um, Lydia and Aldemira. So obviously there's two shrines dedicated to them. They're just not detailed or keyed. So if somebody wanted to be from Alda Damara or Lydia, um, they definitely could be from here. And they could come with a fine instrument, a musical instrument from here. And highly skilled because of what's going on here, the background of Woodstock. Huh, <laughs> Woodstock. Okay, you know, I didn't name these places. It came from the Living Greyhawk. Rhinehurst. Uh, Rhinehurst is a, a larger city. And you can see by the key on the map here, you see the graphic? It's right on the um, the shores of the Velvet Ivor River, too. So it gets a lot of commerce up and down the river, along with those um, those pirate gypsies that's part of originally from, you know, Greyhawk uh, human class. Uh, so they find this place is their home, too. It's called the Rene. The Re the Rene. The Rene have a semi permanent encampment here. If you want to view from the river folk, from the Rene, this is a great place to be from, especially if you want to be a bard or a cleric. Uh, so they enjoy low taxes, low laws. It's a welcoming stop for would be criminals. Um, so there is a thieves' guild here, too. There's two factors work to keep crime low. First is pride and unity of the residents and promoting community spirit that's resistant to endemic crime. The second is the prevalence of the family. Uh, the family is the Thieves Guild. Organized crime network of Verbabank. The family likes to have a secure area to pass goods, both legal and illegal. Um, if you wanted to be a priest of uh, rogues, you definitely could be from here. Uh, they would have a chapel dedicated to uh, the priest of rogues here. I don't know what that would be. I don't have it on the tip of my tongue. But it's not keyed here, I don't believe. But scroll down, maybe we'll find it. Um, also bards, because they have huge performances and concerts here. So general populace is easygoing, enjoys a good night's, good day's work and a good night's fun. It's almost like a, a bar run, a bar district, you know, a bar row. <laughs> you know, people just do a bar crawl. It's kind of kind of like that where they party all night. They have a lot of taverns and inns and festivities, um, concerts. Uh, so this is where, actually, another reason why it's so big is, look at that. It's an intersection between the um, Celevara River and the Vel Velverdiva River. So you got a lot of traffic going up and down both of these rivers here. Interesting. So it's a lot of commerce. Music and lyrical poetry seem almost second nature to those from Reinhurst. They're encouraged, though, by Lord Reinhurst himself, the nobility here. And he often not only attends them, you know, which is great to be noticed by a lord, but sometimes he acts in the local plays and pageantry. Socially, Reinhurst is often viewed as something of a backwater part of the Viscounty. The house position on the Viscount, um, the winery, the church of Farlong. Um, so the head of the church of Furlong is located here, Father Pilchus. The church is a large two-story wooden building right off the Riverwalk. Riverwalk, that would be the location of like a bar crawl, I would think. Um, adjacent to Rundu's Regula, Regula, the premier wilderness outfitter of the region. Uh, so it's like a hiking hiking store, an outfitter store, right next to the shrine of Farlong. So you can get outfitted there before you start traveling. Uh, the lounge 
the lounge of Lear, tavern and art house to the worship of Lear, goddess of poetry, prose, literature, and art. Many Aradin sorcerers and wizards worship Lear, particularly those who dislike Delib. Hmm. So there you go. Um, if you worship Lear, you'd be from here and Farlong. And uh, what's not keyed here is uh, God of Thievery, um, like Aldemir. I mean, obviously, it would have a place here, but it's not keyed. Okay, let's continue onwards. So that's everything over uh, to the northwest. I was finna wrap this up by going down south. Um, Iron Delve is a dwarf community, and they only worship uh, the dwarven pantheon, and they that's fully keyed. And so is Rock Hall, same thing, dwarven village. I'll show you what it looks like because I put some work into that. Let's see map because I had a dwarf in my campaign from here. I use this map from uh, Raging Swan Press. It's perfect fit and i keyed it Not notable people clan of clan rock hall clan rock hall is a, a lot of the quest line for living greyhawk in this area has to do with clan rock hall it's the dwarven quest line and that's in my campaign as well if somebody wants to play it they, even if they don't play a dwarf in my campaign they still come across this lore that these things are happening because they actually rescued one of the dwarves in the first module um, but if you are a dwarf, you can come with this baggage. You can come with this background. You can be a plot hook into further um, adventuring in the in the campaign, you, um, following this line of modules here. Um, we got notable people: ranger, rogue, barbarian, expert, oracle, Quizen the muddled. He's a blind vagabond. Um, dwarf fighter, dwarf rogue. In. Uh, Trying to look for a tavern. I'm sorry, I'm looking for a chapel. The Thane Hall. Uh, mines. More halls. I'm, I expect that um, the Dwarven Pantheon chapel will probably be in one of these halls. Hmm. The Inn. A maze of shanties. Halfling Town. So some halflings live here. Rock Hall's halfling community claims the entire section of the village. They're insular and paranoid. They they craft and they bake. They they they, they use slivers of precious metals and other treasure. Huh, interesting. They craft that. Uh, the middens. The refuge. Um, upper mines. The last tower. I don't see anything about a chapel, though. Government. History. Okay. Um, so I would say that the halfling part of town probably have a small shrine dedicated to the halfling gods. And also one of the halls probably has a huge shrine dedicated to the dwarven pantheon. And um, also, I believe, Iron Delve has a above and below ground. And there's a lot of chapels there. Yeah, Undercity. So there's an Undercity, and there's a picture of it right there. So there's a big chapel there with an NPC, Angus McDoos. The Undercity, the Chapel of Morden, right there. Dwarven female acolyte dressed in cleric's robe, large smithy's apron. Perfect. Um, the School of Battle Raging. <laughs> That's great. Great place to be if, from if you're a dwarf. It's got smithy, it's got brewery, it's got all sorts of locations. That's really cool. Look at this stuff. Um, the Iron Shield of Faith. The lo located the a forge is located at the back of the shop. The rhythmic ringing of hammer and metal is mesmerizing. Um, the quarry of the Cave Bear Shop. Uh, Mercantile Company, another shop. Another shop. Uh, a seminary, headmistress. Uh, a Thane's Hall. The Under Mountain Inn. A library, um, a dwarven tavern, the government. This place is awesome. And it comes with a map and pictures and everything. And the character, Angus himself, full background with history. Pretty neat. Okay, let's go get out of here and finish this up to the east, to the west, I'm sorry. Um, let's go ahead and go to Validia. I don't think there's much here. 
of Lydia is, uh, yeah, it's a small community, Southern Ironwood. There's length ropes here. Uh, so elves, dwarves, humans, and half orcs live in basic harmony together. There's a f Some of this stuff is ridiculous, like enlightened goblins and stuff. You can ignore that if you want. So it's in a progressive community. Everybody loves each other here. Must be something in the water. <laughs> There's no chapels. Um, there is chapels there. You just have to flush them out and create them. Okay, Trustane. Trustane is a town with the backdrop of the Lort Mills. Uh, there's a church of Heronius. is the focal point of the town. And, of course, there's a tavern, Tara Canes. A church is a surrounding the church. So that's right in the middle. And then surrounding the church is shops and taverns. Uh, the mining community. So this is a mining community. The bridge the gap between the people of Riverbank and the Dwarven clans of the Lort Mills. So Heronius is here. Yeah. And the Lort Mills are right here. With all these Dwarven communities. Through here. Interesting. And that's it. Um, I'm not going to go any farther. I'm just stuck to the Viscounty in this video. It's pretty long so already. Okay, so that wraps up my um, part three of the clerics of the Viscounty of Urbabank, of locations you could be from. Um, I know some of these villages were not fully um, detailed out and uh, keyed, but I've only focused on the ones that my campaign is uh, active in and so far, and then I just develop them more as the campaign progresses. Okay, so thank you so much. If you have any um, comments, please leave them below in the video of the YouTube. And if you want to um, contribute or um, ha if you want to see anything different or more, just let me know below. And you can so support me on my Patreon there. And I provide some of this material and maps on there for you to download to use for your own campaigns. Thank you. Good gaming and roll 20s. Thank you.